Hi, I'm here with Helen Griffiths, and you're a wonderful still life artist, my gosh. And, <laughs> and so, and I wanted to show you guys her work, because a lot of times in a portfolio you need to put some still life, you know, to show that you understand shape and form and shading, color, and it's something that a lot of students have heard time with. This somehow <laughs> over your careers. I'm a little bit curious what you've done to be able to do that. So, um, how did you develop your your skills? What was your story? Um, well, I do a lot of work from life. So yeah. I do um, like I'll set up the actual still life and paint it. Um, I think it's a matter of learning to look. Yeah. And um, I do. I paint on plein air, which nice. has helped a lot because you have to go in and you have to focus. You have this whole thing to look at and you have to focus on this little bit of stuff and make a, um, a composition out of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, um, and that's what you have to do with the still life. You have to ignore what doesn't belong. And focus that makes and sense. You know, and I was talking to a professor at RISD one of the best schools in the States, and she was saying that, that too many students work from photograph, and she really recommends working from life, because she said, just what you were saying, if you don't paint a plein air, uh, which means like out outdoors, or um, somebody else has made the compositional choices for you, and you can't see around behind, and you don't smell it, or you know, you're not part of the environment somehow, and she said that you're missing stuff. The camera only you know? sees a certain amount where our eyes can see so much more. Right. right. We can, uh, or a camera will make this black. Right. You know, with our eyes, we can see that maybe it's more purple, or blue, or red, whatever. You know, your eyes see so much more. You just have to look. Really? So yeah, I think drawing and painting is about looking. That's what I always talk about. I paint. I paint. How did you become so good at painting? Are you self-taught? Did you yeah. go to art college somewhere? That's What's a your good process? question because I, I've had a combination of. I went to Sheridan College for okay. illustration. Great. I years used years to teach ago. there. Yes, it's really? a really good training. Yeah. So you took that solid yeah. training and it shows. Oh the reason I wanted to show students her work uh, is not to say to emulate exactly how it is. I mean, it's her own style. She really understands form and value and how to paint and how to do it with color. But it, it makes sense that you went to share it in illustration because this is some of the stuff they teach, like how to draw ellipses and forms properly. Uh, in the shade and shadow, this where the, the form suddenly gets darker. And there's this light value and all of that. You've got your highlight right there, perpendicular to the light. And then here where it suddenly gets darker, it's actually called the penumbra. And we have a little bit of a medium value and then it suddenly gets dark. Like when people aren't really, they haven't learned to really see it because they're still thinking, oh, something just gets slowly darker as it goes away from the light. It would <laughs> seem to make sense. But that's not what it looks like. And uh, because if the light rays are coming across and blazing across that, there's no light hitting there at all. And so it suddenly gets dark. That's how it actually works. You have to forget that you're painting the teapot. Yeah. Look so, at what you're painting. So you forget what it is and just look. Look for not what you think it would be, but what does it actually look like. And so when you so capture that, like everything's perfectly drawn, and the shade and shadow and the reflection, the reflected light. Like, I'm going to show you some up close ones so that you can see why I think this is a good example. So, and a lot of students need to put something that shows that you understand form and shade and shadow in your portfolio. And here's some great stuff that shows you. But she's also got like a sense of design too, and composition, and a little bit of a modern twist on still life, which is great. So how do you keep it fresh? And she does it all from, from 3D observation, not from photograph. And that's the secret to, to really seeing what's there. So you got to learn how to draw from, from real 3D. Stop using the photo. Maybe when you're first learning, but you got to get away from it. So it's also nice Also look to see. at the negative space too. Yes, looking at negative space, absolutely. And you know, we can see better when we look at what's not there. 
we well, don't have any preconceived ideas. If you're and having it helps. a problem with the drawing, yeah. and, and trying to figure out why, look at the, the negative space. It'll show you right away. Yeah. You look at that shape. Yeah. So here's a good example. The eggs really well shaded. Right. You see. You can see there the highlight, the penumbra or the core shadow, and then the reflected light. So we'll notice things like this one too. Beautiful example of that. And there's a nice one down here too. Let's tilt down to that one. That's a nice one. These eggs are beautiful. So if you want to put still life in your portfolio, make sure it's well observed. And maybe try something that's a little more unusual, not typical stuff. This is kind of cute in, you know, incorporating something else in the painting. Like these so birds. this was from life, and then those were from photos, obviously. Right. <laughs>